So New York on the left, Gloucester on the right. New York, a team that have added a touch of American East Coast razzmatazz to proceedings this weekend. Another team that have an awfully long history of truth be told. Talented young group cobbled together for this weekend. Kind of American Sevens version of the Barbarians, if you like. They're not actually a bona fide team back home, more a collection of swift and skillful talents from the USA national squad and fabulously named clubs in the New York area, the Old Blues, Long Island, Tiger, Mystic River, Gloucester, a good old Gloucester. And we love them all the more for it. The only team that needed to qualify and they have played beautifully over the course of the weekend. They've got better and better ever since going down in the opening match to Moscow narrowly first thing yesterday morning. Tom Foley in charge of law and order. Yeah, and really the opportunity for these these two sides to finish off with some silverware. You know, there's, there's nothing other than that to play for, but in sport and particular you know, in rugby, players want to win things. They want to win trophies. They want to be synonymous with a side that collects silverware. And that's what's on offer to both of these two teams. Just to make the point that Gloucester having to do without the services of Martin Thomas and Andrew Bullamacow in this plate final. They were injured yesterday and haven't played any part in this. And this is the long-striding USA skipper, Nate Augsberger, who is a, a USA international. Here goes Alossio Yamo Yamo. And I think he might have had his foot just in touch. Yeah. Tall Dix, the touch judge on that far side in front of the East Stand. His eagle eyes saw Yamo Yamo's laces just in fringe on the wrong side of the line. To see, great tackle really. Just managed to force him into touch. There's Gareth Evans on the charge. Have a, another look at that. It was fabulous defensive work. Lost with the abbreviated line out. Nev Codlin. Again, being borrowed from Cinderford in National League One. That's a bit more like the Gloucester we know and love, the driving mall from the line out. <laughs> oh, one of the more unlikely developments this summer, what with them winning the JP Morgan Sevens down at the wreck, was, was shared heads falling in love with Sevens. Well, Who would have thought fair, it? I, of course, I joke about the driving mall, but o over the last couple of years, actually. I can understand that because Gloucester have changed their ways quite considerably the last four or five years. They do like to play this very wide, expansive game, but I think they've got the balance really good at the last couple of years. They've got the grunt up front, but then the finesse as well that they need in the midfield and on the wings. Robinson and Feldman linking up neatly, though, for the States. Augsburger again finding Alossio Yamo Yamo, who's a right old handful, and Yamo Yamo over for the try the Fijian who's played for the British Army in his time played in the same army team as Apo Satala who's turning out for the cherry and whites today and he showed a little bit of sevens magic there yeah Yamo Yamo's been New York's go-to man really isn't he in terms of you know leading by example and just managed to evade the two tacklers both went a little bit too high on a man who's you know certainly this size big powerful just gets through that first tackle and that's that's not going to stop him. Sevens forming such an important part of the USA's development programme. Sean Horan and Steve Lewis um, who are basing themselves at their new Olympic Development Academy in the New York area. Looking at Sevens as... Um, Perfect vehicle, really, to expose their players to this level of competition in the build-up to the Rio Olympics in three years' time. They're investing money in places like the, the ODA, as it's, as it's called. Just come off the back of a summer of Club Sevens back home. They've got a ten-week competition where lots of the top American clubs play, and so all of these players will be in the groove, and we've seen that. They've been eloquent. They, uh, they understand how this little boiled-down version works. Yeah, very much so, you know, investing heavily in, in sevens, and I know it's an area that they're really looking to improve. And Just going back to Gloucester for a second, their fans obviously would have loved them winning the JP Morgan Asset Management Sevens, but also winning down at the wreck as well in Bath. That would have brought an extra bit of uh, cheer to their fans. John Kokinda, New York flanker, coming in with the big hit that 
stop Gareth Evans in his tracks, and that takes some doing. Evans getting back rather wearily to his feet. These are these are lung bursting moments, muscle aching moments. They've been playing for the best part of two days now. This is where all that pre-season fitness work that was put in in June and July is being tested to the max. They're very tough. I suppose the one consolation is normally the finals in sevens are ten minutes each way. I think on this occasion we're, we're only playing seven minutes, which is <laughs> thankful for small mercies. That. What, they will be taking that, <laughs> won't they? Because six minutes is a long old time in a final. Also, the, you, you, you talk about being lung bursting then, the physicality. When you, when you put the physical part into the sevens, you don't necessarily see how tough that is and how much it drains you. These guys are so strong. Their upper body, their biceps and, and pecs and, and back muscles, really, really strong. And it takes it when it does get physical, it's it, that is really, really tough. Augsburger in his scrum half and holding on to the ball well, much hinging on his experience this weekend. And he's led the side beautifully. This is John Feldman, who plays for the Long Island Club. No idea how good the Long Island Club are, but what a club to play for. And this is Derek Lipscomb, who used to be a linebacker in college football back when. He's a pretty decent wrestler as well at Columbia University in New York. And now he's turning his attention to sevens. And one of those first, perhaps, to come through. Not quite good enough to make the grade in American football, but with all the attributes to make it very big in rugby, maybe. Well, and you could potentially see other American... Um sports stars not just in uh, not just in american football even the even the ice hockey guys or uh, baseball they are still big and strong and athletic uh, and the the bigger the profile rugby gets in america the definitely you can see those players coming across and having an effect well, derek lipscomb scoring the 190th try of the tournament so it's getting Getting close to that 200 mark. If three oh, to be a million miles away, lol. Three games to go. I don't think you would have lost too much money if you bought that 200. I've lost any yet. No, um, still got two and a half games to go. A dozen points to the good, the New Yorkers. Unless they've been welcome regulars on the IRB World 7 Series for a while now. Finished last season 11th in the rankings. In France and Argentina, but ahead of Canada, so they're at that kind of level. This is Rodri McAtee, who's impressed us over the last three or four weeks that we've been using sevens as the warm-up to the new season. However, that was um, a long way down for Apo Satala at the end of a long weekend. Fijian, who's returned to the shirt as a guest in recent weeks. Left the club three years ago to go to Sale, a move that never quite worked out for him, but he's got bags of sevens experience. He's at Taunton these days. And only once won an Olymp uh, Commonwealth Games bronze. Is going to get another run out yes, here at Twickenham. Got some work to do to come from behind, however, the Cherry and Whites. Augsburger finds Gareth Stepani, old floppy stoppy, one of our favourites yesterday. There's nothing floppy about that. He's quite hard to stoppy, however. Third try for the Americans, and they are looking very, very good as we approach half time. They are looking sharp, aren't they, Nick? And then, in contrast, Gloucester just looking a little bit weary, Matt, falling off tackles and just seem to have lost the appetite for the fight. And, you know, it's not surprising, really, because they've, they've, they've put a shift in over the last couple of weeks, and it's the same, they've kept the same squad of players together, and maybe just starting to take its toll on, on, on that group of players. So half time, the New Yorkers leading by at least 17 points. It might be 19 points if old Nate can slot this. There we go. 19 to zip, as they would say on the other side of the Atlantic. wondering why we're not hearing those little sevens huddles, then you weren't with us on the JP Morgan sevens a couple of weeks ago, were you? 
maybe you'll understand exactly why we're not hearing those little huddles. Stand up apologising. <laughs> Getting a little bit colourful there. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think there was there was too much being said in the cross that I had my BDI on it from up in the country and as much as Rob Belby was trying to motivate them, it just as uh, you know, Lowell's been mentioning, I think emotionally, Gloucester just, I mean, it's, it's been tough, and they've been on a real high, and quite, quite right so, but um, I think they're probably ready for a little bit of a trip down the M4. Actually, just a word about Martin Thomas and Andrew Buller-Macau, the two casualties from this weekend. Martin Thomas yesterday, skipper missing today, just aches and pains of yesterday, really, nothing serious with the new season three weeks away against Sale. Andrew buller Macau hurt his shoulder yesterday, but we're hearing that he may well be offered an academy contract on the back of the work that he's put in with this seven squad over the last few weeks. So it's been a very profitable fortnight or so for Andrew buller Macau, one of the Fijian sevens players that the Cherry and Whites have called on. Here, however, is John Kakinda trotting over for the fourth try for the Americans, and this is getting a little bit grisly for the West Countrymen. Yeah, unfortunately, Gloucester just didn't hold their defensive shape there. I think he, you know, can't see quite who it was, but just flew up out of the line. I think it might have been, well, Steph Reynolds, and then often going back against the grain, Matt, with, you know, when often where the space is not filled in by um, by the defenders and that was that was neat work from San Francisco to recognize that that's where the space it, you know is, is, is obviously going to be yeah I mean you can appreciate the the efforts that teams have to go through to organize the defenses particularly around the rut because if you are two or three yards away from the pace whether it be through fatigue or a little bit of effort mental switch off those gaps appear and it, it's just blatantly obvious to run through and uh, yeah unfortunately Costa have switched off a little bit they'll be chasing consolation tries so a little tweet from the former South African coach Paul True who South Africa's most successful coach he's left the post after a decade but he's just tweeted to say that it's a great watch this but you're comparing it to the level that South Africans and New Zealand and the Fijians play on that IRB World 7 series on a regular basis. It's just lacking the intensity, particularly in this on this second day as Steph Reynolds skates over. And maybe maybe this is where the fitness level at the very highest level of sevens is beginning to show itself. You know, bear in mind that those those international squads are that's what they do. That's what they're contracted to do all year round. So their training is very specific there. Um, their schedules are very specific, their diet is very specific, and so that they can go out there and it, it might well look more intense, um, but it will be a lot more organised. You know, we heard Jim Mallander earlier today, we were saying, well, we don't really, we're not really into sevens, we haven't done too much training about it, uh, we're concentrating on the 15s. Yeah, and I think also, you know, we, we can't forget that the world IRB sevens is exactly that, it's international rugby, this is club rugby, and therefore the level and intensity and speed and skill on display is always going to be that little bit below what we see at international level, and so it should be, because on the seven series we've seen the very best players in the world, as Steph Reynolds just looks like that's the end of his tournament. He's done well to play any part today, having been poorly yesterday. We were discussing Steph Reynolds, who's obviously been a bit of a star of, of the Gloucester team. And, was, and here goes Augsburger, who's been a star of this New York team. The captain, another try, and that is one, two, three, four, five now. So what, what might be interesting, though, guys, is what happens next year? And what happens when, you know, fingers crossed, the World Cup 7s comes back? The ripple goes around the, the rugby playing world. Actually, this is a this is a decent tournament here. Maybe we do want to be sending some more of our international club quality players so that it ups the intensity, ups the quality and, and, and a better brand. I'll give you an indication of the level that Sevens is working at these days. I spent a morning with the England Sevens team a couple of months ago and they've got so many fresh ideas to take the players onto a different level. The, the one that really caught my eye was um, somebody who now monitors players sleep and they go to bed with a little wrist monitor that throughout the night lets the coaches know exactly when they got deep sleep whether they were restless whether they got no sleep at all so when they go down for breakfast in the morning the sleep monitor can say hang on a minute i'm not sure that the decision to start with him is going to be a good one he only had two 
decent out. I mean, that's the level that we're working at now it's, in terms of preparation. It's funny you should mention that because I've got a monitor at home, but at the other end of it is a 16-month-year-old kid screaming <laughs> at me. Have any of them got any kids? Sleep monitoring? Yeah, you, you're obviously not getting much sleep at the moment. <laughs> yeah. There goes Akapusi and Guerra. Fair play to, to Gloucester. They've been... Um, They've been dispatched here, but they're still going. They're still giving it a go with Billy Burns, 19-year-old, not new to Twickenham. Freddie's brother, who was in the stands to watch him come on to make his England debut against the All Blacks last December. And then with no number is Joe Murphy, who's looking after Buller Macau's spot in the team at the moment. I was used to find if you played... If you, when you played a game and you won, you slept well. If you played a game and you lost, you slept very badly. I wouldn't need to tell the sleep. I wouldn't need sleep monitor to tell me that. I was sort of going over every single moment in the game and just tossing and turning. And depending on the severity of the game, you'd have no sleep whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, sleep is that's quite. <laughs> if I take myself back to where oh, God, it would have been about 2000, 2000 when the when the professionals professionals really came in. Actually, if you remember, Law, we used to have to get up in the middle of the night and take our supplements. It was that serious. You know, you the whether you have your creatine, but you had to do it throughout the night as well. So you set time? an alarm. Oh, two, three in the morning. Wow. I think it's fair to say that some were a little bit more religious than others at setting their alarm clock. Um, I, I was some would be getting in at around that time. Well, I would, always, I would always see, see the benefits of, uh, of getting a good night's sleep. Over. There's a lot of creatine in, that, in, in beer, a lot of creatine. Here goes Augsburger again, who clearly had a very good night's sleep last night because he's fully charged today. This is Jack Tracy. Played for the USA junior team recently. You're on the floor, you're out of the game. But it's, it's an indication of what sevens can do because they're trying out things in terms of, of physiology, if that's the right word, that perhaps you're not going to try out in the 50 in the side game at the moment. So it's a great test bed for, for coaches to come and give things a go that might well be used in the 50 in the side game one day. I think you're absolutely right. It, it really uh, probably. Fair play to Sir Clive Woodward. He was always intent on bringing in these new things. And some things worked, some things didn't. And Ben but Ryan as well, who, who was using a lot of stuff that maybe Sir Clive didn't want to use that they could give a go yeah. in the sevens to. I think you're right. It's, it's, a, it's an opportunity to... It's an incubator model to pilot things, to try things, not just off the field, but also on the field. Try new players and see what... You know, see how they react to this type of environment. That kick might work out to perfection. Not quite for Jared Robinson. Picked up by Joe Murphy. Approaching the final minute of what has been a very long weekend for Gloucester, what has been a very long two or three weeks with all their JP Morgan seven success. And they're going to end it in fine style. This is Max Thomas, who's come in for Martin Thomas. Skipper who's given today a miss. Still the intensity at the breakdown, or at least the competition at the breakdown, remains fierce. Frustrations of a long day. That just num numbers at the breakdown there. You know, Gloucester made the break, got tackled. Unfortunately, didn't quite have numbers, and, and San Francisco recognised that and were able to be really physical at the breakdown and, and, and force the turnovers. While we've got Gloucester with us, Lawrence, I don't want to miss the opportunity to get you to just offer some thoughts on the arrival of Matt Kvesic in their back row next season and, and what the road might offer for him over the next couple of years. Yeah, by all accounts, I mean, I didn't see a lot of what happened in Argentina, but had an outstanding um, tour of Argentina and has decided to make the, the short trip up the road from Worcester to Gloucester. And, you know, clearly, you know, hopefully we'll be competing at the right end of the table. It's going to be very interesting. He's widely regarded as, as one of the real answers to, um, to what is still possibly not a, a solved problem for England at open side. And, and I think he's got great opportunities, really interested to see. And no greater test than the opening game of the season against the, uh, against the champions, Leicester. Now, are we, um, are we done and dusted? Not quite. We still need to wait for the referee's whistle. We've had the hooter. We've known for a while that New York were going to have to find some room on the jet home for the plate. Just going back to that, Nick, I think Stuart Lancaster's got a bit of time yet, but I don't think he's quite solved the exact right balance in the back row just yet. And there's some wonderful players playing very, very well um, in six, seven and eight. Um, it's going to be a really fascinating season with 2015 looming around the corner. It certainly is. Here's Billy Burns, who may well have some um, something to say about 
England's long-term future at 10, perhaps. His brother will have a word to say about it as well. Still we go on. Augsburger. Matt Cox wrestling away with it, man who's worn an England seven shirt previously. Trying on the fringes of the first team last season. That is Murphy. And this is Gareth Evans. Oh, it would be fitting if Gareth Evans finishes proceedings with a try because from start to finish, at the beginning of the JP Morgan sevens to the conclusion of this World Club sevens, Gareth Evans has really caught the eye and he makes sure that Ollie Morgan's men finish by scoring the last try in this plate final. Yeah, really gave himself that one-on-one -on -one excellent pass to put him into that space, but really backed himself, you know, didn't he, against uh, Jack Tracy. And uh, rightly so, because uh, took him on the outside and gets himself over for a consolation score. Yeah, he scored a shed load of seven strikes in recent years, and there's another one. Doesn't alter the outcome, it's um, American Smiles. They have won this plate final by 33 points to 14. New York will finish fifth, Gloucester sixth.